When we think about Tom Landry, many things come to mind. A great innovator, stubborn, a visionary, cold-hearted, or a leader of men. No, yeah, you can use them pretty much in here. Go hard, go hard, out of way, go hard. Many of us Cowboy fans have our own definition of who Landry was as a coach. But perhaps the most common name that everyone everywhere can agree on is that Tom Landry was and is a legend. 5th, 7th pop, wing down and then, there won't be a soul in there. Okay. He won two titles, made it to three others, and made the franchise a playoff perennial almost year in and year out. However, the 1985 Dallas Cowboys would be his last team to reach the postseason and perhaps one of the signs that the legendary coach had reached the end of his illustrious career. Going home on the range, I just carry this, the American Express card. But before the 1985 season started, a lot was going on outside of the world of football. In January, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA peaked in at number one on the US Billboard 200 charts. The same month, We Are the World was recorded by Michael Jackson and other legendary singers was also released. Madonna's Like a Virgin was number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and the number one song in the country was George Michael's Careless Whisper. Hip-hop made amazing strides in 1985, caught classics like the Fat Boys Are Back and LL Cool J's We Rock the Bells and the culture classic Lottie Dottie by Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick made hip-hop a household name. The world was introduced to Whitney Houston for the first time. Hits like How Will I Know and Saving All My Love For You rule the airwaves. So I'm saving all my love for you. Colorful clothes, wild hairstyles, and creative makeup told a story. The 80s was a decade of freedom. When the world was singing How Will I Know, Dallas was having another uneventful NFL draft up until the fifth round, where they selected the 1982 Heisman winner. I had to give a big thanks to the team because I think life is made up of teams. And the USFL superstar Herschel Walker. The 50th annual. NFL selection meeting is now in session. Walker wouldn't play until the following season in 1986. Brooks went on to play six years, recording a total of 15.5 sacks in 69 games as a professional. Meanwhile, in May 1985, the NBA rookie phenom Michael Air Jordan Now how much do you get paid just to wear these shoes? A lot. <laughs> Topped off one of the most dominant rookie seasons in NBA history by winning the Rookie of the Year award. Well, for me, I'm very happy that I achieved so much, and hopefully next year will be more promising. On July 3rd, Hollywood took us back to the future, starring the legendary Michael J. Fox. The movie was a commercial success, earning $381.1 million. It became a cult classic. What did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! When the season started, Dallas played in one of the most anticipated Monday night games of the season versus Washington. Washington was the best team in the NFC East, winning three straight divisional titles. But America's team, on a night where all of America was watching, surprisingly upset Washington and convincingly beat them 44-14. <laughs> Let's sing it. Happy birthday, Washington's offense threw for six interceptions. Pickoff! Greater pickoff again! Theismann had a 32.2 passer rating. This was one of the worst losses in Washington's history. September of 1985 was one of the greatest months in the history of showbiz and video games. It may be the most addictive toy in history. Nintendo video games. The latest video game craze to sweep the United States and Japan. It's called Nintendo. During the following week of the NFL season opening, the gaming world as we knew it changed forever when Shigeru Miyamoto at Nintendo introduced Super Mario Brothers to the world. Super Mario Brothers has sold over 40 million copies worldwide since 1985. I remember every day after school, I used to rush home to play my Nintendo and I just spent hours and hours. In September, numerous classic TV shows made its first appearance on television. Shows like The Legendary Golden Girls. Thank you for being a friend. 227 Small Wonder MacGyver Growing Pains 
Thundercats, Adventures of the Gummy Bears, G.I. Joe, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, and The Twilight Zone. These shows made September a month for entertainment. The next game Dallas played after Washington was the Detroit Lions. Uh, we know how good Dallas looked at the, on that opening game against Washington. We also did the game where Daryl Rogers' team won his first down in Atlanta. But it might be Operation Overload. Uh. Dallas was still celebrating from the blowout win over Washington a week earlier because they would end up losing to the lowly Detroit Lions, which was a huge upset at the time. I think they came in here still thinking about how well they played last Monday. After the Detroit let down, although Dallas would win six of their next eight games, they ran into one of the most dominant teams in NFL history, the 1985 Chicago Bears. Dallas' humiliating laws made the cover of Sports Illustrated. He has really been taking a beating here. After the Bears lost, the Cowboys was 8-4, tied with the Giants for first place in the Eastern Division. After Danny White and the boys played one of the best games of the year on Thanksgiving, they faced another letdown and a historically embarrassing loss against Cincinnati. The score was an amazing 50-10 before Dallas scored two meaningless touchdowns. Unlike the Chicago game, this was a huge loss because the Giants was coming to Texas Stadium and was now tied for first place again. We beat St. Louis when we had to beat them, come back, we beat Philadelphia when we had to beat them. If you're not mad at yourself for a game like that, then I don't think you should be playing football. Dallas had to bounce back and they did just that. We're going to be out there, we're going to be fighting, we're going at the Giants, and we're going to win this division. The importance of the game, if Dallas wins today, they win the NFC Eastern title. After trailing 14-7 in the second quarter, Sims and the Giants offense were moving down the field when Jeff Coat intercepted it and rumbled 65 yards for the tying touchdown. Jeff Jeffcoat is going to run this back the length of the field for the tying touchdown. It was one of three interceptions on the day for the Cowboys defense. Fourth and 18, 52 seconds to go. Dallas won 28 to 21. The Cowboys had the NFC East clinch. And it will be their first division title since 1981. But they still had a chance to move up from the number three seed to the number two seed in the final week of the regular season. The playoff picture was a lot different than what it is today. The format at the time was three division winners and two wild cards. So Dallas was a shorter week off and a home game in the divisional round. Dallas needed to win and hoped the Los Angeles Rams lost on Monday Night Football. The problem was that the Cowboys were playing the defending Super Bowl champions, the San Francisco 49ers. A must-win situation for San Francisco. At the seven. He fumbles, lost it, and I don't know who got it. The Cowboys got it back. What a way to kick it off. What a way to start it. The Cowboys are lucky to maintain possession. The 49ers were desperate. It was a win-or-go-home game for the last wildcard spot. White was out and Gary Hugaboom was in. The 49ers dominated the second half in a 31-16 win. Hannah back to throw with time. He's got a man wide open. That's White Clark. Dallas would travel to Los Angeles in two weeks for the divisional playoffs. Good afternoon and Happy New Year to you from CBS. We're going to have a lot of fun here today. Dallas couldn't stop the great Los Angeles running back, Eric Dickerson. He rolled up a playoff record 248 yards rushing. He ripped off two long touchdown runs in the second half. Dickerson picks up where he left off. It's the bye-bye blues. And the final score was 20 to nothing. Now we're down. It's all over, folks. No miles. For the Cowboys. Although the Cowboys didn't make it to the NFC Championship game, the season was still one of the most eventful seasons of the decade. Two and a new hat for Coach Landry. Defensively, the Cowboys had one of the most stout defensive lines ever to play in the NFL. Defensive ends Jim Jeffcoat. Well, and they've done it with one guy in the front four. I think this guy has all the sacks and Ed Tutal Jones joined Randy White to form one of the top defensive fronts in the league. All three players had double-digit sacks that year. In the defensive backfield, All-Pro Everson Walls led the team with nine interceptions. Four players from the 1985 Cowboys were named to the Pro Bowl that year. Randy White, cornerback Everson Walls, tight end Doug Cosby, and wide receiver Tony Hill. Hey, Cowboy Nation, if you remember what life was like in 1985, what were some of your fondest memories from that time? PB and J with the crusts cut off. Well, Brian, this is a very nutritious lunch. Leave a comment and share. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And as always, thanks for watching. If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style?